Please be seated as I pray. Father in heaven, what a blessing it is to sing a song that describes the life cycle of the one you save. Born in wretched sin, dying in that sin, helpless to save themselves, but you give a savior. You give a savior who is powerful to save. And it is this morning that we want to remember him. We want to remember him well. I pray for every one of us in here that you would help us to examine your word well so that we can remember him as he deserves to be remembered. And I pray it in his name. Amen. Have you ever considered how many times in a day you fill a bottle of water and take a drink? You empty that bottle of water, you refill it again, and you take a drink again. You have a physical need, and you address that physical need with a physical solution. Today, for our time around the Lord's table, we're going to be reading about a woman who is doing the very same thing. So if you have your Bibles with you, would you turn with me to John chapter 4? And if you don't have a Bible, some men are going to be coming down the aisles, and they can put a Bible in your hand. If you don't own a Bible, please consider this as our gift to you so that you can begin reading God's word, his promise of a savior for yourself. We're going to be looking at verses 10 through 14 today. The setting here is that Jesus is walking. He's walking a long way from Samaria, from Judea to Samaria. And he's in Samaria and he's sitting at Jacob's well and he's very tired and he's resting. And he's sitting at the well, and a woman approaches the well to draw water from the well, and Jesus asks her for a drink. This is a divine appointment, and Jesus is using this conversation to reveal his true identity to the woman at the well. As we read this passage, take note of a couple of things. First, in verse 10, take note of what it is that Jesus says is very important for this woman to know. And then as we read in verse 10, as well as in verse 14, notice the water that Jesus says he gives and what is so special and what is so unique about that water. Let's read verses 10 through 14 together. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. She said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you, who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus answered her and said, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. We see at the beginning of verse 10 what Jesus says this woman must understand. He says to her, it is imperative that you understand exactly who I am. The rest of this conversation that we're having together hinges on a right understanding of who I am. And he tells her a little bit about what he gives. He says he gives water, but he gives living water. And then in verse 14, he gives a little bit more detail about that living water. He says that this living water springs up inside of you to eternal life. What Jesus is doing here in verse 14 is he is providing a contrast. He's providing a contrast to the way in which a human being provides a human solution to a human problem to Jesus Christ and his divine solution to a spiritual sin problem. And Jesus is telling this woman, you have a physical need and you can meet that need, but you can meet that need only temporarily. And once you've met that need, you will need to be back to meet that need again. But he's telling her, you have another kind of problem, and that kind of problem is a sin problem, and you can't meet that need by yourself. But I can meet that need because I am God, and I am the one who can meet that need, and I can meet it permanently by giving you eternal life. So he explains to her that he is the one who can give eternal life. The conversation moves forward, and Jesus begins to draw the focus to his identity and exactly who he is. If you drop down to verses 25 and 26, we see that Jesus reveals exactly who he is. The woman sees that she doesn't have this living water within her. She sees that she has a sin problem. And she says in verse 25, I know that Messiah is coming. I know Messiah is coming. She remembers something about the teachings from the scriptures and she knows that Messiah is coming. 
Jesus' response to her is very simple and very clear. He says to her, I am. He says, I am. That is my name. My name is Yahweh. We were just singing about Yahweh. Smed was reading about Yahweh in the Old Testament in Habakkuk. Jesus is saying, that is who I am. I am Yahweh. I am the one that the Old Testament prophesies about. I am the one who is foretold. I am the anointed one. I am the coming king. I always have been God, and I always will be God. And because I am God, I can give you eternal life. So that's what we want to remember about Jesus this morning. We want to remember that Jesus is the one who gives eternal life. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, remember how it is that he actually gives eternal life. He actually gives eternal life by making an exchange, an exchange of his life for yours. He gave his life by hanging on a cross so he could bear in his own body your sin, and he could free, freely feel and receive God's anger and wrath against that sin, and he could satisfy all of God's anger against that sin. That's what Jesus did for, this, for the sinner who looks to him as their Savior and their Lord. If that is you this morning, we encourage you to join us, join with us in remembering who Jesus is here today. Remember what it is that he did on the cross, and with that work on the cross that he purchased eternal life that he gave to you. So that's what we want to do. When the elements come to you, take and pause and consider your life. Consider how God has provided a Savior for you, how that Savior went to a cross for you and hung on the cross and bore your sin on himself so that he could save you and give you eternal life. If you're here this morning and you would admit that Jesus Christ is not your Savior, he's not your Lord, I want to draw your attention to verses 15 through 18 in this passage. This is an important passage. At this point, the woman is beginning to understand that Jesus is talking about eternal life that she doesn't have, and she sees that she wants this, and she sees that she needs this. What Jesus does, especially in verses 17 and 18, is he brings her sin into view. Jesus helps her understand that in order to turn to Jesus as your Messiah, you must turn from your own sin. This woman's sin is very clear. It's described very well in this passage. I'm here to tell you this morning is the sin of every unbeliever is the same in essence as the sin of this woman. It's the same in its basic nature, and that is the desire to live under your own self-rule. If you're here this morning and you're living under your own self-rule, I want to encourage you to take some time after the service to talk to me or any one of the other elders. We would love to talk to you about Jesus the Messiah and how he is a more worthy master than you are over your own life. So the men will come and serve us, and when everyone has received, take the elements on your own. I'll close our time in prayer.